Welcome to the A&H Dodridge Blacksmith Shop. Established in 1849 and moved to its present site in 1873 on the main street of Angerston, South Australia, it has survived two world wars, a depression and technological advancements to continue to operate today as one of the few remaining main street smithies in South Australia. Come and visit our unique attraction. We are open from 1 to 4 p.m. on Saturdays, Sundays and public holidays. School excursions and other opening times are available by arrangement. Just contact me, Bill Gransberry, on 08 8564 I'm one of the volunteer blacksmiths here. I've been doing it for about five years and I started when I was 12. Um, I've got the idea of working with my hands to create something. It's a passion for both of us. Uh, we've actually formed an association and what we do is we come up to country forges like this and help out. It's been a lifetime ambition of mine in any case. I wanted to be a blacksmith when I was 16, but uh, Dad said that blacksmithing was a dying trade. When I retired, a dream fulfilled, so I call this my soul work. We recommend this to other country forges to come and have a look here. This is just a, a lovely forge to work in and the people are friendly. It's great. The shop spans three generations of blacksmith endeavour in the Doddridge family, who were one of the first British families in Angerston. Representing an important aspect of the community's heritage, it is now heritage listed. The regional William Doddridge that came out from England was my great-grandfather. There's been a Doddridge blacksmithing business in Australia since 1837. It was continued with the family until Hardy, the last working blacksmith here in this building. When I left school, I worked for my father in the head of a fruit block and flowering time used to bring the shears in here to Mr Doddridge to sharpen them. Well, that's uh, over 70 years ago. <laughs> nice to blow the, blow the bellows for him too. <laughs> Mr Doddridge. Hardy was the name, Hardy Doddridge. Hardy Doddridge is my grandfather. We spent a lot of time together in, in the blacksmith shop. I came to know him because I was working on the council in those days on road making. Most of our tools were hand used, like picks and shovels and crowbars and so on and uh, they occasionally needed to be sharpened. Hardy had been here from the age of 16 until he was 90. And at 90 years, he gave the blacksmithing business away. When he retired, he would always light the forge when all the grandchildren would come around, if we wanted them to live. And we would have one great playtime in there heating up bits of steel, making bends, hammering on the anvil, occasionally getting burnt hands, but having lots of fun. The swing that sat in the backyard was made for his children. Made out of old buggy wheels, or rather the tyres off the buggy wheels. It was typical of what blacksmiths could do, just give them a piece of iron and they could literally make anything they wanted. This old Hornsby engine, I don't think anyone really knows when it was installed here, but it says that it was brought here to South Australia in 1914. It's done a marvellous job over those years. The belt that you can see is driving a counter shaft, which has pulleys on the other end, which is also driving that lathe. You could swap belts different places all over. That engine drove everything. The old uh, Dodge buckboard out there, the old butcher's van. I sold firewood in the Brosser Valley for 40 odd years. I knew Mr. Purse Turner very well. I used to take firewood to him for his wife for cooking on the old wood stove. And I knew of that old vehicle in the shed, but he wouldn't part with it back then. In excellent condition still for his age, and God knows how many miles it's done. It doesn't matter what day you go over there, there's always somebody comes along and is absolutely fascinated with that old vehicle. Hardy Doddridge had two cockies in his lifetime. His last cocky was named Fred. Fred died at the age of 76 in Narracourt. 
Our current cocky is called Bruce and is looked after by the Schubert family. Everybody loves to come and see cocky. <laughs> All the people walk along here, they stop and say hello to cocky. That's Bruce. Well, this is a forge, obviously, the fire. When we heat up the metal, we like it to be a really nice heat, sort of a yellowy heat, and that way you can really shape the metal well. We've got the bellows back here, and they're just like big sacks, like lungs, really. And um, so it pumps air underneath and it keeps the fire going. This is the anvil. It's what we usually work on. Uh, so we've got a table here, and then uh, another table, sort of, that's where we do the cutting and the horn, we can round stuff on it. Most people think that blacksmiths are farriers. They are, but they don't just farrier. The blacksmith was the, the centre of the hub of, of, a, of a village. Everybody went there. In fact, the people used to be actually married over, over the anvil in Scotland. A blacksmith was often called a, a jack of all trades because he was the handyman, the repairman. If anything required to be fixed, he was the man to do it. The significance of the blacksmith shop was very important to the town and surrounding areas. He would have done lots of work for wineries, shops, farmers and fruit sheds. Blacksmiths, of course, were also very important to the man who worked the land. The land was worked by horse and ploughs, all horse drawn, the days before tractors. Hardy fixed broken carts, drays, trolleys and wagons. A lot of this damage was caused by a horse bolting. Things would get smashed up against trees, stumps, gate posts and maybe other horse and carts. It wasn't very heavy rebuilt here, it was only a small man. He was quite a strong man, handled the shoeing of the horses without any bother. Very strong in the shoulders. I remember him like, picking up a Clydesdale leg, it, it, it looked like it must have weighed a ton. Our old horse needed shoeing. He made a set of shoes and he took the old horse out on the footpath in the street and put the shoes on out there. Uh, I don't think anybody would be allowed to do that today. Apart from repairing jobs, blacksmiths were also able to create or make new ones. I've just made a barbecue tool for turning sausages and out of a little bit of 10 mil bar and I'll put a leaf on and wrap the leaf around so you can follow your thumb when you're holding onto it with your thumb. So for a little trinket, we make them for the forge and if they get a couple of dollars or a couple of gold coin donations for it, that's fantastic. Hardy made many items for members of the family. This ash dispenser, dustpan, very useful things around the fireplace. For a hanging pot, if you see it hanging, it hangs very square. This little machine here is for putting on a campfire. This hoe he made for my mother. That was made by Hardy for grandma, his wife, who put the clothes basket in there and wheel out to the clothesline. There were very few blacksmiths left and Hardy became a little bit of a celebrity and various people painted him, but this is the best painting by far that was done of him working in his shop. Hardy was approximately 93 years old. It's ex exactly as I remember him at the forge. Eye on the fire. For fairly obvious reasons, I'm quite pleased that the old blacksmith shop is being cared for in the way it is and kept as a memorial to the blacksmithing business that was my uh, family heritage. Being in the blacksmith shop today as a volunteer tourist guide, uh, I meet a lot of people. Many people, when they first, when you meet up with them, they will say, well, there's a wow factor attached to this, they will say, wow, look at this. Well, I've met people from all over the world in here, so it's just one of those things that um, you get a, a good kick out of. The A&H Doddridge Blacksmith Shop is located on the main street of Angerston in the heart of the beautiful Barossa Valley wine region. For more information, visit our website by googling 
Angerston and Penrose Historical Society. Thank you to all the volunteers who are involved, the Barons of the Barossa, Angerston Lions Club, Charles and Kerry Keeper from the Angerston Management Group for their donations to the Doddridge Blackness Shop in Angerston. <laughs>